great man, good man, opposite the jabroni, one way there in the Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful was there. Uh, agents and no respect for Mr. Wonderful come tell him, what the hell, man, we need you for interview. And the, guy, the man gets up and saw the Mr. Wonderful. And Mr. Wonderful had his cup in his hand, back and forth. Finally, that big time Jabroni, which is his teacher, is my student, Brad Reagan, where he keeps his business, Minnesota. Big Van Vader didn't respect the legend. And he thought he's the toughest man in our business. And, and back and forth, cost him back and forth. Finally, the big man, the Jabroni Gurira, he threw the first punch to Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful, his cup fall down. His cup fall down, and he took him one boom. After that, he gets up, boom, 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 close to the ball, double leg, take him down, one, two, three uh, feet in his nose and deep. Swear to God, big man head go down, didn't come up. We have to help him, bring him up, put him in the locker room, put the ice, and they bring him, somebody bring him, nursing him, put the ice in his nose and deep. And after 10 minutes, he come back again, sucker punch him from behind. He want to fight again. I said, shoot, late, man. Get the fuck out of here. And then we put him in the locker room. And that was his last, last fight. He talked, oh, it's part of handicap. I don't think it's handicap. But he didn't respect him. Because somebody else always in this earth better than another. He talked, Paul, I have a bad nerve. I don't think it's a handicap. Yeah, and he didn't respect all time. Ever. Even threw he your said, name in there during the situation. I'm sorry? Even threw you in there in the situation. That was sir. And then I had the towel. I give the towel to Paul. He threw draw his hand. I said, Paul, you don't want to kill him. Swear to God. And that big man, he learned. He learned hard. Because my student, Brad Rikers, he used to stretch him in Minnesota. Don't get me wrong. But I'm very that big man. And he told you he's the toughest man in our business. So he didn't respect them, Booker. They tell him they need you for interview. Kevin Sullivan sent somebody over there, tell him, hey man, they need you for interview. He tell the little girl, uh, go tell him I'm not ready. I'm not going to be ready for a long time. Because he talking to that girl, he pent his face. A stink? That's what is his name? Sting. A stink. <laughs> yeah. So they talking, ha ha ha, gaba ga. If only Kevin Sullivan sent the real lion. To over there, tell him, hey, what the hell, man, we need to for interview. And he bad mouth, no respect to Paul. And <laughs> Paul teach him really, really <laughs> toughest fight beside in the locker room. Were you even there, Sheik? You, you I was there, WCW. Yeah, I was there because I, I want to go get a job. That's what I did from Romeo Hogan. Tell me, Carl, my belly was not there. <laughs> well, but I saw that fight. That was the biggest fight. In the history of the professional, I saw in the locker room. It's a step away from WrestleMania 1, Paul, but that, that story has really made the rounds over the years. Is it true that you were in shower shoes when this happened? Uh, yeah, I wish it hadn't been. Yeah, <laughs> I was. What set this incident off? You needed him for promos and he didn't want to come? Or? Well, no, he, uh, I got along with everybody. I got along with him. Man. I don't know what his deal was, but uh, Kevin Sullivan said, Paul, I don't. Kevin probably set it up, uh, <laughs> and uh, asked me to, if I'd tell uh, Vader to do an interview because uh, the, the 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 camera guys go on break. I think it was like six o'clock, and if you didn't do it before their break, then the show started at seven. Mm -hmm. So it meant that he wouldn't have been on. Uh, it wouldn't have showed him for the next week's show because mm -hmm. he had to do that promo because he was one of the main events on the next week's show and he wouldn't have been on it. No interview, no nothing. Well, that hurts the ratings, is, you know. Right. That's that's what he's there for. You know, the guy was making uh, um, a lot of money. Two hundred and fifty thousand a year, a lot yeah. of money on the contract. Yeah, and uh, so I went over there and asked him very politely, and nicely, and. Uh, you know, he said uh, the F word and, you know, going back and forth. Finally, I said, well, I'll, I'll go tell uh, Eric Bischoff what you said. And uh, 
When he did, you know, we started arguing some more and everything, and he sucker punched me, just like she said. Same thing. All the same thing. And uh, got a lucky punch in. Hurt my feet. <laughs> and, uh, just a bad thing, though. Four Sad. months later, he was in WWE. <laughs> One of those things. Cost him about $2.2 million, though. Wow, from his contract that he had? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, she didn't know? <laughs> 2.2 or 2.3. Wow. That's it? Yes, sir. That's a lot of guaranteed money to walk away That's from. That's for real. Another big match. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndor. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live.